In this video, we're looking at why the gap property being a part of Flexbox is such a big deal, as well as how you can recreate it without too much work while we wait for browser support to improve. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Now for the gap property, it comes from CSS Grid where it was originally called Grid Gap, but they've since dropped that grid prefix and that's because they've changed the spec so that we can also use it with Flexbox. And I think this is a bigger deal than what most people might realize. Before we get to that though, I want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by Skillshare. I've talked about them before and I'm happy to keep talking about them because they're a great online learning community. On Skillshare, you can learn about a wide range of topics from front end and back end development to illustration, graphic design, animation, freelancing, and more. They have thousands of classes that include video lessons and projects to work on as you work your way through them. They cover a wide range of skill levels and most of the classes are under 60 minutes long so you can easily fit them into your schedule. If you're interested in trying them out, the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description just down below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. And you can use that free trial to check out the JavaScript Toolkit write cleaner, faster, and better code, which is by Christian Hillman. A lot of people in my comments tell me they struggle with JavaScript. In this course by Christian, he takes a look at setting up a good environment, debugging, keeping up to date with all the constant changes in JavaScript, and a lot more. Now, if you do take advantage of that free trial to check that out, once your free trial ends, if you sign up for an annual membership, it is less than $10 a month. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, in which we're now we're gonna jump back at looking at the GAT property and why this is such a big deal that it has come to Flexbox. So here we are in a very simple code pen. I have shared this link down below. So if you want to come in and play with this, you can. Uh, but basically all I have is a div setup that is a uh, display flex and then the children in it, I just have some styling on them so we can see where they are. And when we do a display flex, I mean, if we don't have display flex on there, they just stack one on top of each other. And as soon as we put display flex, then they go one next to each other as the default behavior. And often when we have something that is like that, if the code pen would like to update, we'll see it in a second. Um, and often what happens is when we have something like this, we want some space in between these elements. We don't necessarily want them touching one another. Now there are a few other ways we can do it. And we're going to look at those to see how we can solve the issue for now until Safari's browser support has increased for it. But once it has increased, what we can use is gap. And I'm going to do a gap of 1M. And or maybe let's make that a little bigger just to make it a bit easier to see what's really happening. So you can see it's created a space in between each one of those items. And if you're familiar with grid gap, you'll know a little bit of how this is working. And let's just bring the console up here, my console, my dev tools up here. And I am in Firefox, and one reason I like Firefox is we have a grid view, but we also have a fire, uh, Flexbox inspector. So if I click uh, my Flex parent, it knows it's display flex. And with that on, I can actually see the flex items and I can see the gap that it's created in between those. And that is amazing. And you can see what's really nice about this gap is the gap is in between them here, but it's not affecting the outside area. So I don't have to worry about the exact size of these. Uh, I don't have to try and distribute, you know, specific widths and then set weird things inside. I don't have to do a weird selector to control that. I can use the parent to control exactly what the layout should be. And then I can just plug my content into there. And that separation from layout to content, I find really, really nice. The other thing though, which is really amazing with gap is what we could do. Um, let's come in here and say that we have a flex direction of column. And then over here we do an at media and you can already see why this is amazing uh, at media. And uh, we'll just throw a min width of, I don't know, 30 M something random number. And we can do my flex parent flex direction of row. And the amazing thing with this is when we jump between my media queries, uh, I think I made 30, 30 is probably a little too small. Let's go up to 60 here. Uh, when we jump between or when we hit that media query, my gap is dividing my columns. And when we hit that media query, my gap is going in between the items on the other axis. 
that is just wonderful, right? I think that is just so, so nice. And again, I'm not creating any extra space on top because there's a weird margin top on something. Uh, I don't have to change how my margins are working and all of that. So that's really, really cool. Uh, another reason this could be really, really useful is let's just come on these and say that they have a width of 50%. And the reason I'm doing that is what I'm going to do is throw a flex wrap on here. Flex wrap of wrap. Um, and because they're 50%, actually I should have done maybe we'll do 40% because the gaps do get incorporated into there. Um, but you can see it's, I am actually getting into like this three dimensional layout now where I have my gap here and I get my gap there a little similar to how, um, this is a little bit similar uh, to how a grid gap would work where it's on both axes. But if you do have an area where things overflow and you're using wrap, because uh, maybe what you'd even have on here, if you did the flex wrap, you're probably doing, um, instead of width, let's just do a flex of one, one, and we'll do 45% should probably fit. Um, so that means that they're able to, we'll go back to 40 then. Um, there we go. So you get them, they can be like that. So we have my gap in the middle and then at the smaller screen, they go that way. So the gap is super useful uh, for things like this. Now this isn't the best layout and we probably want to avoid this specific thing, but you can see that it just the fact that it works in both axes and creates the spaces everywhere is super, super useful. Now, as I said, this, and again, we're getting into a bit of weird territory, but there are times where you will be using flex wraps and, and forcing content to wrap. So. Um, it just, this isn't maybe the best example of why that is useful. <laughs> um, but I think this is super cool. But as I say, we don't always have this nice use of a gap. So I'm just going to turn that off in my dev tools and we're going to remove my gap from here because without the browser support for it, sadly, we can't really be using the gap yet. So instead, what we can do is we want to look at the children. So that's what I have here. These are the direct children of my flex parent. Um, so what I want to actually do is select only two of these three items. So I'm going to go with the second one and the third one. And there's a really nice selector, which I got from Andy Bell, Flex Parent, which is the lobotomized owl. And I don't think he's the one who, who created it. It might have been Hayden who created it. The lobotomized owl is something I've talked about before, um, but it is select every element that is a sibling of another or adjacent sibling of something else. So it means it won't select the first one. I'm not going to dive too deep into this. I'll put a link down below into an article that looks at the lobotomized owl, um, just in case you're a little bit confused by that. But what we're going to do here is say margin top, and I said 3M before, I think is the gap we had, right? So what that's doing is it's saying this one has a margin top and this one has a margin top right there. This one's not getting the margin top. And the reason this is so useful is if I didn't do that, this first one would also be getting a margin top and you can see that's screwing up my layout because it's adding that spacing here. Uh, and the same thing, if I did a margin bottom, it would be the same thing with the other way around where this has the gap, this is getting the space. And then here I'm getting all this empty space down here and it's pushing that white background down. So the lobotomized owl in this case with a margin top is a perfect solution. Uh, but the only problem now is if I get two bigger screen sizes, those margins are here. That's really awkward. So just like we can keep the same media query or, you know, we'll just take this whole thing and move it down right there and I'm going to copy this and we're going to throw it inside my media query but instead of a margin top we want this to be a margin on the left side and it's not going to be perfect because that margin top is still there but you can see what it's done is it's added the margins there so this one has a margin on the left this one has a margin on the left and this one has no margins anywhere so that's why it looks more normal right now and to be able to really take advantage of it, I think the easiest thing is the shorthand. So, because then we can overwrite things a bit easier. So I want the top to be three, zero, zero, zero. And then you just take the same thing and you switch it around where you do a zero, zero, zero and put the three at the end instead. Um, and by doing it this way around, once that updates, we should have, oh, I have margin left will not work there. There we go, just margin like that will work. Um, so here we have the margin is on the top and then when we get to here, we have a margin of zero, zero, zero and then on the left side, we get our margin of three. And again, the advantage of doing the shorthand here is we're overwriting the margin top to switch it over. So you don't have to set specifically margin top zero and then say what your margin left is um, or anything like that. So we can recreate it. Now this is not gonna be a perfect recreation of what we had because if I start getting multiple, if I had a flex wrap on here and things are falling onto other rows, it doesn't 
it just doesn't work the same way. But as a baseline, just for a nice starting point, I think it works really well. And then when you start getting into those more complex layouts, you have to start coming up with some more complex solutions uh, or other ways of organizing your HTML sometimes to be able to set it up properly, which is a bit of a pain and which is why I'm really looking forward to that support hitting Safari in the not too distant future. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to Safari getting support for Gap so that we can start to the easy way moving forward. If you did enjoy this video and you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And if you're still trying to really figure out Flexbox, check out my full playlist where I break it down. Thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.